Here is how OpenAI made GPT-4 the giant that we are looking at. And in this video, we're going to learn about the new GPT-4 leaks. And most importantly, one of the important choices that OpenAI has made in terms of how they scaled GPT-4 architecture, which is called Mixture of Experts. So we're going to jump a little deep into Mixture of Experts. And we're also going to look into the cost aspect and other aspects that are part of the leak. This entire leak is all third party information. None of this is vetted or confirmed or acknowledged by OpenAI. So take any information that you are learning from this video with a pinch of salt. It's not a factual, completely factual information. It's part analysis, part speculation. So the blog post uh, from semianalysis.com came um, out. It said GPT-4 architecture, infrastructure, training, data set, cost, vision and MOE. And if you scroll down with a huge interest in reading what are the blog posters, uh, at the end you would see, oh, you cannot read more because you have to be a paid subscriber. Oh, that's a shame. But there was a Twitter influencer who wanted a little more influence on um, how their details are being shared. So the Twitter influencer shared the important or top points or aspects of um, the entire blog post, which ultimately at this point, the tweet has been taken down for copyright violation, which is like quite understandable. And uh, I'm not sure what will happen to this video when I publish this video, but at this moment, let's learn what are the details about GPT-4 that are leaked. The first and foremost, GPT-4 in terms of parameter count is 10 times bigger than GPT-3. And they believe it has total about 1.8 trillion parameters across 120 layers of deep neural network. And um, right now what comes to my mind is all the memes about GPT-3 size and GPT-4 size. But leaving the memes and jokes aside, it seems like GPT-4 is indeed really big. And that's, that's something that we can see in terms of parameter count. If you are not familiar with the aspect of parameter count in the deep learning world, if you see a bunch of our tutorials, you would have seen like I would have mentioned something like Falcon 7B. And the 7B there refers to 7 billion parameters. These parameters actually define what kind of data has gone into the model building process and um, or like what kind of data that the model can hold. And that is a very crucial information about how good the model is. That's why a bigger parameter size model always is better than a smaller parameter size model. And that's where again, you know, the concepts like quantization come where you can literally use a bigger parameter model in a smaller memory size. Anyways, parameter count is a very important metric to understand the capability of model. And we can see that GPT-4 is more than 10 size, 10th of, or more than 10 times bigger than GPT-3. The most interesting, like at least like for me personally, the most interesting news was MOE. MOE stands for mixture of experts. So OpenAI, it is like highly speculated at this point. And um, we have heard from multiple experts in the past, even in one of the Lex Friedman's interview, George Holtz mentioned that it is not a single model. Unlike a lot of people expected, unlike GPT-3, unlike GPT-2, it is not a single model. It's a combination of models. But whenever you say combination of model to a machine learning engineer, typically people think about Model ensembling, model stacking. This is like quite a common thing in the machine learning world where instead of building one model, you build multiple models and then take the vote, vote or, you know, like high score of these models and then usually use the power of all the models or balance out the error from all these models. That's what people would typically think. But there is another technique, especially a technique that is quite popular in the deep learning world is called mixture of experts. Open AI was able to keep the cost reasonable by utilizing a mixture of experts model. They utilize 16 experts within their model. Each is about 111 billion parameters. So you have got like total about 101.8 trillion parameters. And you can see each of these experts are about 111 billion parameters for MLP. I, I guess the MLP here refers to multi-layer perceptron, but um, I don't know. I don't know what the acronym actually means here. So what is this MOE mixture of experts? Is it something that OpenAI like discovered from nowhere? Is it is it like some magical piece like RLHF? Completely no. There are recent papers about mixture of experts like this. I think this came out like a couple of days back, 5th July that 
talks about using mixture of experts in large language model world and how that might give a benefit. So they are using mixture of experts uh, in instruction tuning to get gain some advantage. But if we go back in time, um, the thing that we will see is in 2022, I didn't go back beyond this, but in 2022, Jan 13th, Google research published a blog post that said scaling vision with sparse mixture of experts. And in fact, they claimed that one of the things that they claimed that they have built the largest, like one of the largest models for vision using mixture of experts. So you can see in scaling vision with the sparse mixture of experts, we present VMOE, a new vision architecture based on sparse mixture of experts, which we then use to train the largest model vision model to date. Like this is in 2022. We transfer VMOE to ImageNet and demonstrate matching state of the accuracy while using about 50% fewer resources than models of comparable performance. The entire open source, the code has been open source. The point here is that, as you can see, mixture of expert is not a radically new technique. This technique, I don't know why, for some reason has not been spoken much, even for that matter. When I was doing my research, I learned that the NLLB, no language left behind. So Meta AI, Facebook, of course, Facebook Artificial Intelligence Fair, Meta AI built a very popular model that we also covered on this channel before, which is called NLLB. It's a language model, um, especially for a low resource languages, like languages where low like resources were not widely available meta ai built this model but what i did not realize at that point is this language model the meta ai's language model also uses mixture of experts first we developed mixture of experts network that have shared and specialized capacity so that role low resource languages without much data could be automatically routed to the shared capacity so the point, first of all, that I'm trying to make here is mixture of experts is not new, but it seems that it has not gained much popularity, at least in the broader pop or data science or artificial intelligence world. But what we are seeing here is that mixture of experts being used by Meta AI and also Meta AI for language model, Google AI for vision model. And uh, what is mixture of AI, mixture of experts doing? As the name suggests, you have got a mixture of experts. You have got a bunch of experts stacked together. And what happens there is what is happening here. You have got an input something and that gets routed to the particular expert. So imagine you are running a call center and you know if this call comes in, you have got an expert to take care of this particular issue. Maybe this is like an order delay and you know you have got an expert for order delay. And maybe the next one is regarding a product update. So you route it to the second call agent. So the same way what the neural network learning actually does is instead of having one large monolith model, I mean, like there is nothing monolith already in a deep learning because it's all layers and networks. But as you can see here, you have got a router and I mean, again, routing goes through like different approaches. They've got a vanilla router and they've got a batch priority router, but leaving that aside, what ultimately happens here is that you have got a routing system that takes the data or in this case could be tokens, route it to the particular expert who is good, who is the best at that particular task and then get the final output and collate it together. So what we are trying to say is that like this, in this demonstration that you are seeing four experts, OpenAI, when they built GPT-4, they've got 11, or sorry, 16 experts. Each of these experts have 100 and billion parameter model. So these are like learners, these are like experts, and that's what mixture of expert is doing here. So about the mixture of expert routing, that OpenAI has probably used a simple approach, and um, that's, that's, that's what they, you know, the, the tweet claims. And for inference, this is all for training for inference, each forward pass inference, like generation of one token, only utilizes 280 billion parameters. 
So even though the model itself is a 1.8 trillion parameter model, the inference actually uses only 280 billion parameter models that is equivalent of 560 teraflops. This contrasts with 1.8 trillion parameter models which is equivalent to 3700 teraflops and that would require be required if it was a purely dense model. Instead of using a MOE approach, if they were using a single purely dense model, they would have had to have a lot of computation, lot of power to do this thing. And that's, that's what you're seeing with the advantage being here. And in terms of data set, GPT-4 is trained on 13 trillion tokens. These are not unique tokens. And um, they have used two epochs for text-based data and four for code-based data. And there is like millions of rows of instruction fine-tuning data from Scale AI, which is another very interesting information. I always knew that Scale AI was like the data company for a lot of these companies, but I didn't know that OpenAI was explicitly using data from Scale AI for, um, for training GPT-4. And you have got multiple information about batch size and all these things. Final most important information for me, at least at this point, before we wind up this video is their cost. The cost in the cloud, if you consider that A100 cost about $1, the training cost for this like run would about go about like $63 million. I mean, that's the estimated cost. Imagine like you want to build a GPT-4 equivalent model using an architecture like that, using the talent like that they've got with the data set that they've got like 1.3 trillion parameter, 1.8 trillion parameter, you would have to probably shell about like 63 million parameter model. And this again resonates with what Sam Altman said when somebody asked a question, especially in India, when somebody asked a question about can we build our own model? Sam Altman very clearly openly said that um, there is no point in competing with them in building the largest model because it is simply not viable for any small enterprise or corporation to build a model that is as sophisticated as GPT-4. Imagine like this is GPT-4 and probably GPT-5 could be already in works. We Nobody knows. So it's a huge amount and you need like a huge amount of backing. Now you understand why when Elon backed out, OpenAI turned towards Microsoft for the funding from there and probably Satya hit the biggest lottery of the decade. Um, anyways, so the pre-training could have been done with uh, 8,192 H100 in 55 days, because now H100 is available for $21.5 million at $2 per H100 hour. But uh, this is the estimate that what might have happened at that time when H100 was not widely available. Overall, this tweet has been taken out, um, but I will link this archive page in the YouTube description. And I will also link the Google blog post about uh, the sparse mixture of experts and also the NLLB in the YouTube description along with the main blog post. So if you if you want to pay money and then read it, you are welcome to do it. So overall, like there are a lot of things that um, this blog post opened. Uh, one, I can understand that this is a huge cost. I can understand the training aspect, but MOE, mixture of expert, seems to be like an interesting approach, seems to be something that people are not talking about often. And I I, I believe and I wish that with this GPT-4 leak, uh, which is the unofficial leak, I mean, that's why it's a leak, right? Otherwise it wouldn't be a leak. That a lot of these large language model builders and trainers uh, look into MOE as a potential approach to scale up their model while using lesser compute. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you in learning something new about GPT-4, especially I was so obsessed with MOE, so I went deep into it. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.